here back with another shave. Today is Sunday, so we're doing a uh, late afternoon shave. It's about five o'clock here in central, western central Victoria. Um, and it's, well, it was a lovely day, but it's now clouding over and uh, the forecast for the rest of the week is not too flash with more rain. What are we using today? Well, we're going on with Wickham. Wickham, uh, what's it called? Soko 1912 Cashmere. 1912 is actually the soap base formula. And the scent Cashmere is a wonderful scent. It's got this paper, when it comes to have this paper thing over the top, Quite a firm soap, at least it may have dried out because I've had it in a while. Quite firm. Lovely scent, absolutely wonderful. Oh, it's a, the soap description says um, notes of basil leaf are woven into an elegant heart of white patchouli and underscored by dry oak moss. Calming, soft, and comforting uh, aroma. It's one of those scents you, you have to go back to the tub and keep smelling. It's, it's just a wonderful scent. Anyway, well, that's the soap we're using. And Wickham's is a great uh, soap base for me. I'll, it's one of my favorite vegetables um, soap bases. And the brush we're using with that, I've had it soaking for a few minutes already. I'll just give it a shake. Is my Amiga ball brush. It's the 11126 a Van Cole Wood brush with a 24 millimeter uh, ball knot, 2455 loft. So I'll just put it back on the soap. My Uncle Shave Super Soaker. <laughs> and the razor we're going to use is just, we're still going with the home like shaving razor. Today on two. On plate two. And the blade we've got in there is the silver blue, Gillette silver blue uh, on the shave two on this blade. Now I had a shave yesterday with the with, with the grain challenge. Only for me, it didn't shave down enough to keep me by until tomorrow. So I'm doing another shave today. And. What else we using? That's it. We'll go over and make the leather and we'll come back. Okay then, we're at my overhead camera. We've got the uh, ceramic Yeti brush uh, Duke leathering bowl. And I've got my half teaspoon sample. Not teaspoon, half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon sample. I'll just squash in there. And I use this half teaspoon uh, measuring scoop to measure that out. As you can see, it's firmish soap, not hard soap, of course, but uh, easy to manipulate. I'll just give my brush a, a squeeze and a shake, and we'll get started. Oh, a lovely scent coming off this leather. That basil patchouli scent mixed together, it's really nice. What else is in it? Uh, 
like patchouli in the base, basil and bergamot in the top and oak moss in the base. Beautiful. Oh yes, lovely. I can keep putting my nose in the scent. We'll start putting some water in that. It's already got a nice shine on it. This uh, 1912 base is really good. Like I said before, it's one of my favourite vegetable soap bases. Just going half a teaspoon at a time. I can see a hair floating around there somewhere off the brush. Looks like half a teaspoon of soap is more than ample. So I look of it. Uh, we'll try that next time. Now, even though this is a new tub of cashmere, I'm fam familiar with the soap because I had a sample before this and I used all that up. Of, uh, I've got about five of the uh, 1912 cents. Imperial, no, not Imperial, the Russian leather is one of them I remember. Also, a lovely scent. Okay, oh, lovely scent. It's above medium scent, I will call it a 6 out of 10 scent strength because I can smell it wafting up into my face just building the ladder. There we go. Just how I like it with that soft droop with the 20 ml of water. Alright, we'll go back to the other station. Alright, made a lovely ladder with that. So beautiful, look at that, absolutely lovely. As usual, I've already um, put the pre shave on using the Lucky Tiger Liquid Shave Cream is my pre-shave. So we'll just um, touch it up with a bit of water. It's a, that shake, Liquid Shave Cream is very mildly scented so it won't matter what um, soap I use. Beautiful, look at that. Not, still needs a, quite a bit of breaking in. 
It's softish, but not soft yet. Oh, wonderful scent. Yes, at least a 6 out of 10 scent strength for me. Just put a touch of alum on my fingers. So, wand setting 2. With the home like. And we're going to do a two pass shave. So, across the grain. And one pass against the grain. Very nice. Oh, that feels good. Oh, lovely slippers. Now, the idea of doing this uh, two part shave is well, one to shorten the shave a little bit, but also. to have less passes on the skin, you know, having blade on the skin. For me, the uh, first pass, or if I do a with, with the grain pass, on the first pass, um, it's more of a knockdown pass. And I can do the knockdown really with this one across the bank, grain pass. I only have two passes. Oh, that's lovely. Beautiful. Oh, lovely. If you're in the UK, you can get uh, Wickham's soaps at a reasonable price from Connaught's. They also do samples, I think two pounds each, I think, from memory. Now, on this day, 30 of October, not 1888, the first US patent for a, for a ballpoint pen was issued to John J. Lord. Actually, Loud, John J. Loud of Wimmouth, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. The patent was uh, described as an invention that been specifically for marking of rough surfaces using wooden or paper boxes. Yeah. So originally it was the first one was like a marking pen. Now, the ballpoint pen didn't catch on. Originally, it wasn't considered a commercial endeavor, invention, because it wouldn't write on paper properly. It wasn't until 1930, that a French uh, industrialist, uh, well actually journalist, French journalist, 
in Hungary, well no, actually he's not French, was he? He's in Hungary, uh, Lazio, um, Lazio Baro. Does the Baro make you twitch a little bit? <laughs> yes, it was him. What he did, he found that the, the ink they were using was actually just normal fountain pen ink before then. And he he thought that he needed a, um, a quicker drying ink, something similar to what you use on newspapers. So he got his brother, who was a pretty good chemist, to have a look at it. So he came up with this viscous ink that can be used in these ballpoint pens. And so the burrow was formed. <laughs> oh, we're going against the green now. As you can see, uh, <laughs> you can go into automatic mode because I've been doing three pass shaves for that long, like eight years or something. And I basically go into automatic mode. Now, uh, me. Maceo, let me see, he made the patent in 1938 and of course the war happened then and being Jewish his family is Jewish, him and his brothers um, went to Argentina and lived there In 1943, he started producing these pens. This is a lot closer shape than I've had yesterday, that's for sure. <laughs> And in 1943, yes. And then about 1945, uh, a lot of companies in America started producing them. But they were still a premium product. Um, the ballpoint pen back in those days was equivalent to about over $100 American. or just one pen. So basically a premium product. And then it was the Frenchman by the name of Michel Birch, Birch, sorry, an Italian born French industrialist who ran, also ran a uh, ballpoint pen company came up with this master stroke of making cheap high volume pens and he shortened his names to BIC B -I -C, to use as his um, company name and so the BIC was born, the first uh, low cost pen, borrow pen that is. Lovely smooth shave with this much razor. It's a neutral 
exposure. Same like the Rockwell. Across all the plates. Lovely close shave. Now I had a weeper here yesterday around this area here. in the normal spots. Very happy with the shave. It's BBS on the cheeks basically and the rest is close, not BBS. So in 1950 the big crystal pen was born and since then it was, it was hexagonal that was the clear plastic hexagonal pen that you see you still see today the cost difference was um, they were cost about two dollars each back in those days as opposed to over a hundred dollars. Less than two dollars. Got plenty of leather, so we'll just paint the whole face. Beautiful, absolutely wonderful. We're only doing touch up so just enjoying a scent. So it's virtually a, a third pass really, third pass touch up. But I'm doing more buffering. Sorry, I'm going a bit quiet, just getting around those tricky spots. Are we or not? As you, you might see that I've got quite a few wrinkles in the skin, I have to stretch it out.
lovely shape. Well, let's stop charging any blood, so let's have a look around. Well, it feels lovely. That's a damn fine shave. Just maybe just a touch here against the throat here. I won't go any more at it though. Lovely close shave. BBS on the cheeks. Round there. Residual from the soap. Get the last scrapers. Yes, there's one weeper there. Well, it looks like a weeper. Very small one. Alright, we'll just rinse off. Feels really nice. Uh, a two and a half pound shave. It's been going well for me this week. I think I started it a couple of weeks ago. It's been going well. Oh, very minimal. Uh, feedback, just the, that area there, it looks like a weeper. Yeah. And just minor tingles around the face. Wouldn't even call it a one out of 10 feedback. All right. So what we do now, well, look at the amount of leather I've got left here. I'd like to cut back if I'm doing two part shaves, I don't need them. It's much slower. All right, we'll put that on my face and we'll go into my shower and come back. It's because it's got plenty of goodness in this leather. And the scent is wonderful. All right, back from that shower. Wonderful, wonderful shave. Very smooth around on the cheeks. Chin's good, stash area, close shave, lovely. Right, we'll um, put the splash on now, starting with a bit of witch hazel. Yes, that feels lovely. Totally BBS on the cheeks and in the moustache area, actually. Just, just in this throat area, which I have trouble getting down, and around the bottom of the neck in that crease, which is my normal spots. Beautiful. But it felt lovely in the shower. With mostly smooth skin compared to yesterday. So it's obvious to me that <laughs> I don't do well with just a with the grain shave. As you can see, I had no irritation. And that one wee burn it was so minor that it sealed up pretty quick. And I'm putting a bit of Lucky Tiger Vanishing Cream on. It's a balm. I'll put some on my head. It's got eucalyptus in it. And the final ingredient, I'm going to go with the Ever Reliable, <laughs> Ever Reliable for 7 Eleven. Which, how old is it? I have no idea. 
how well does the formula goes back to the 17, 1800s I believe, certainly 1800s. One of the earliest scents ever created. Commercial one, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Invigorating, smooth skin, ah, happy. Alright, that's my show for today. Thank you all for watching. And